Welcome everyone to the Enhanced Community Integration Social Rec Grant Information Session. We are here today to talk about an amazing grant that North LA and DDS sponsored to create opportunities for um, uh, integrated and social activities for children and young adults in uh, diverse communities. The ages for the individuals receiving this, oh, am I sharing screen guys? Sorry, just checking. I am, okay, guys. Yes, uh, ages three to 21. Um, the vision was really to be able to initiate and get um, some of these agencies uh, some funding to create some amazing, amazing opportunities in our communities and really get some of these social social rec activities going while we work towards vendoring. North LA was granted $848,800 in total, and we had five social, rec, five social rec grant applicants that were awarded funding to create, to specifically to create community engagement and or friendship and outreach activities. DDS later added a seventh awardee as a whole, but the sixth awardee to do community engagement and or friendship and outreach activities. And that was Boys and Girls Club, who is also here to present today. Um, and all current activities are, that are funded through the grant um, are scheduled to go through December of this year um, and are not currently vendored services. However, we are working towards vendorization of quite a few of the agencies who have been awarded grant funding. And so the six grant awardees who specifically were awarded funding to create these community integration and uh, friendship outreach um, activities that we'll be presenting today include Acing Autism, Buildability, Golden Heart Ranch, Jade Nolan Community Services, Monarch Behavioral, and Boys and Girls Club of Malibu. Just a brief overview of ACING Autism. Uh, we provide adaptive tennis programming for children with autism. Although um, we also take children who also have other developmental disabilities. So it's not just restricted to um, autism, but that is how our program was developed. Um, our curriculum, our tennis curriculum is developed specifically for children um, with autism to meet their specific needs. We work with tennis pros, for our program and also ABA therapists um, on court to help provide that, um, that experience for children. We know that how important it is for children with developmental disabilities to have that social recreational experience. So that is why our program was created, just creating that experience for children to be able to receive the benefits from recreational opportunities and engaging with others on court we have about 135 programs across the United States and two specifically in the North Los Angeles area. And Burbank is specifically the one that we're working with as well, along with the help group in Sherman Oaks. So we have two programs. They, are, um, they run six to eight week sessions. And we pick up about, based on the court capacity, but about 15 kids per court. And then those kids are paired with volunteers and we promote social opportunities to interact with other kids throughout the, um, throughout the session. If there aren't any questions, then that's all that I have. If anybody else has any questions for acing autism, or you can write the questions in the chat as well, we'll be answering those. And we'll be sharing the links to acing autism and how to contact Neutral in the chat. Um, and also not to forget this session is being taped and will be provided for future reference for anyone who would like that information later. We'll also be sending an email out to case management who might be in attendance regarding all of the brochures. And if anyone would like to request any information from any providers, um, you can obviously feel free to uh, message them directly if they are here and you catch that and if not, you can always message resource development at nlacrc.org and we will get you any information that you need. I'll start sharing now. And next we have Violet Way of Boys and Girls Club. And I will briefly share our landing page for you. And then um, you can do your intro and, and share your screen. 
Hi, everyone. My name is Violet. Um, I am currently the director of um, curriculum and outcomes at the Boys and Girls Club of Malibu. Um, however, a few years ago, I was um, a service coordinator at the regional center in San Diego. So I have a small glimpse into the wonderful work that you all do, um, which makes me even more excited for this partnership because it lands close to home for me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Continue. Okay. Um, so we have two really exciting opportunities to share. One is our traditional after school programming. That is what we're offering um, right now. We do have a summer program as well, but that just ended. Um, so I'll focus mostly on our after school care and then um, I'll turn it over to Peggy. She can share our second offering. Um, this is an example of our flyer for the teen center. Um, we do also have two elementary sites as well, so we can serve ages five through 21. Um, and it is, as I mentioned, a traditional after school program. So it does happen after noons only. Um, so around 1.30 to 6.30, uh, Monday through Friday. It's free for regional center clients. Um, so if you, when you're filling out the application form, use this code, it will waive any fees that are associated with um, our membership. Um, and something that's really special to me is kind of the clickiness that happens on campus or at schools really falls to the wayside when our members come up to our clubhouses. Um, there's this really beautiful integration that happens that just happens really organically. Um, the partnership between the kids is never um, forced. It's just this really beautiful uh, integration that, that happens and it's so fun to be a part of. Um, we offer programming that happens within the clubhouses, um, anything from arts and crafts to, you know, more traditional outdoor recreation. We have a lot of social emotional learning programs and curriculum, some drug prevention here at the teen center, um, fun holiday activities, barbecues. Um, sometimes there's field trips. So a lot of different ways for our um, kiddos to interact with one another. Um, and as I mentioned, it's after school only. So these are the hours for our teen center, our elementary open up around 1.30. So there is a little bit more time there. Um, and yes, that is kind of our information for, um, the after school program. We do have and have previously been serving, um, clients that are members that are regional center clients. Um, so this is an integration that we've already been doing um, and it's it's been seamless so far. So we're excited to continue that partnership. Um, does anyone have questions before we turn it over to Peggy? Yes, I actually have a question. Yeah. Um, is it possible to find out which sites with school which school sites this will be at and can only the children that attend the same schools uh, be at that after school program? That's a great question. So I can definitely I'll share these flyers in the chat right afterwards. Um, it's only on our Malibu campuses. So we have one at Malibu Elementary, Webster, and then at the Malibu High School campus. Um, they do not have to be um, students of those schools to be able to attend our programs in person. Um, so I appreciate you asking that. And we did from an earlier session get the question. This is specific to Boys and Girls Club of Malibu. Some um, other Boys and Girls Clubs were awarded these grants as well, but they're working with other regional centers. So this is unique partnership between North LA and Boys and Girls Club of Malibu. All right, Peggy, I have your brochure if you want to take it away. Thanks, Violet. Hi, everyone. My name is Peggy Zerdev, and I am the director of the Wellness Center here at the Boys and Girls Club of Malibu. Um, I am a clinical social worker, and I work along with a team of mental health providers. And we are a training facility, so we also utilize uh, MFT and MSW interns to provide services while we are training them. Um, some of the services that we currently provide 
And if I don't know if you can scroll up a little bit, Violet. To the second page. Thank you. <laughs> Hopefully you all can see as much as possible. So some of the services that we provide are have been provided to perhaps some of the clients of uh, some of your clients or clients that are participating with the uh, regional center. So we have um, mental health services. We provide um, individually for parents, for the kids. We work with um, supporting, right? Like sometimes it's impacting the family. So other family members, we really want to attend to or really uh, understand and emphasize the need for whole family support. So that's where we come in. And we also have workshops and parenting groups that we provide throughout the year. Mainly those are the main focuses. We also do some case management that looks a little like wraparound services in the sense of, you know, we have we know where to go. Um, some of our, our MSW interns are working with families that can help them with, you know, basic needs, as well as other needs that they may have that are hard to find and hard to find support getting navigating the systems. So um, what we've been providing is basically that um, we do it both in person, actually three places in person through virtual telehealth, as well as in home. So we do also do home visits and provide family therapy in that way. Um, we have a very uh, simple link that can be the referral that may, maybe some of you might utilize. Uh, we also have a direct link to the form that's the intake form. So if someone knows that they are really interested in participating, then they, they can just go ahead and fill that out. And um, yeah, I don't know if anyone has any questions for us or for me in particular. <laughs> Peggy, just to add that those services are also um, yes. as yes. well. No <laughs> costs. <laughs> Peggy, can you say where the wellness center is located? The wellness center is located in Malibu. So we are on the on the campus. We're actually, we're at the three locations. So Malibu Middle School and High School are on the same campus. We are, we do have a space at Webster Elementary as well as at Malibu Elementary. Thank you. Yeah, sure. Any other questions? So for all those of you who are just joining us, we are having our presentations from our awardees of our Enhanced Community Integration Social Rec Grant. Um, we have had Acing Autism um, and now Boys and Girls Club of Malibu present. If you are not able to access the chat with any of their contact information, we will be able to share that um, again later, or you can ping myself, Kimberly McNeil, or Maria Hernandez and let us know, and we can share that again to the chat. We'll also be sending out some follow-up emails and posting this information session to our website. And without further ado, I think, Glory, I see you here. So you should be able to share more information about Monarch Behavioral and your current grant activity. We do would like to share a lot of our uh, awardees have very unique um, amazing parts about their programs that have um, ex are, mm -hmm. are exactly why we chose them. And Glory, I know you shared last meeting, last session, that Glory is one of the only awardees located in the Antelope Valley or currently yeah. providing services in the Antelope Valley. So for all of our Antelope Valley people who are here, um, uh, please take note of the current activities uh, available through her awarded grant. Yes. So um, that's correct. Um, I had noticed earlier in the session that um, a lot of people were more towards like Los Angeles area, Ventura and San Fernando Valley. And I think we might be one of the only uh, grant recipients up here in the Antelope Valley. So that's good that we can um, offer the community something up here. So to start with um, Monarch Behavior Services is primarily an ABA company who provides in-home behavioral services to children with autism and other uh, disabilities. Um, we actually do go from age two all the way up to age 24 um, for clients in that program. Um, and um, Kim and Maria are actually working on um, finishing up our uh, 
vendorization so that we will be able to um, accept regional center clients very soon. And um, we don't have a waiting list. Um, so that's good because I know a lot of companies up here do have a waiting list for those services. Um, but in addition to that, because this grant project became available, we kind of opened a separate division and we've been working on um, this um which is the grant project and ours is specifically um, for our kids to get out into the community and experience new things, but also to make friends. Um, and it, it actually has uh, taken off and blossomed more than we had ever imagined that it would. Um, and so we have a good group of families who come every single week. And so now those parents have made friends and their kids have made friends. And so they all look forward to seeing each other every week, which is really kind of cool. And um, even the parents um, becoming friends and they kind of leave the kids to us a little bit and they kind of make a little circle or a little group over off to the side and talk to each other about various things and they share resources with each other. And so that's been really great. What we basically do is every week, we go out into the community, we invite the community, um, and you can bring whoever you want. This was one question I got after the um, first session. So the costs and fees that are incurred per session are covered for the consumer only, but you can bring whoever you want. So if you want to bring your whole family, if you want to bring siblings, you want to bring neighbors, friends, whatever, you can do that. Um, it's just that you would pay the cost or the family would pay the cost for um, non-regional center clients. <clears throat> what I have on the screen now is tonight's event, which sorry, that's, I was, all my employees are on vacation. So it's just me today trying to, um, get this all together. So, um, today we're going to the Antelope Valley Mall, which if you guys are not familiar in the food court has like a little playland area, and um, we're going to be giving away school supplies. So each family will get a bag of school supplies for their child. And then we partnered with one of the food court um, places, which is Enjoy Popcorn. So each child um, will be getting a popcorn in the flavor of their choice. And there's like 30 different flavors they can choose from. And then they'll get a beverage of their choice. And then after we do that, we're all going to play together in the little playland. And I actually had some families contact me after the first session today and said, even though the event is sold out as far as like the popcorn and the school supplies, could they just come and bring their child to play? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't, you know, the, the money part obviously has run out, but as far as just interacting with the other kids and coming to play, that's absolutely okay. Um, especially because families do bring friends and, and siblings that, that don't get to partake in um, the money portion. So that is, you know, obviously we would need to know just because sometimes um, we have to give account to wherever we're going, the restaurant or movie theater, or whatever we're doing. Um, so if you do want to bring um, family that, fam family or friends that can't participate in the monetary portion, um, I'm sure we can accommodate uh, that as long as we just know it's happening. Um, and as Kim said in the beginning, right now, this is not a vendored program. So you don't have to apply for it. You don't have to really do anything more than RSVP. So um, I have a list and every week I contact all of the families. I contact service coordinators that I'm already, you know, I already know from being in the field and I send out the weekly flyer. And then all you have to do is RSVP back. You can text, you can call, you can email. Just let me know you're coming and how many of them, uh, how many there are of you. And then when you come, you just sign in and um, we have some paperwork that normally we ask the families to fill out like a photo release and also like a consumer profile so that we can get the regional center's UCI number. And we have a couple questions about like what triggers your child, what things does your child really like, just so we kind of know what to watch out for during the event. That's the only paperwork that you, and you just fill that out right when you come to the event. So um like I said, so today is the AV mall, the popcorn and the school supplies, but we've gone to a couple of sensory uh, movies where they um, 
have the theater specifically for our students and they leave the lights on and they lower the volume. And we've gone to Chuck E. Cheese and we've gone to tour uh, an airplane graveyard and we've gone to the park and we've had like um, our local snow cone truck come and uh, give out snow cones. And so we do cool stuff every week and the families have really enjoyed it. I mean, they they are lining up for the following week before I can even do the event in the current week. <laughs> so um, so we are hoping that this actually does go past December and does become some sort of vendored program because the families have really, really enjoyed it. Um, like I said, the parents and the children. So it's been, been a great thing. And oh, let me put, I wanted to put up just my um, information. So, and I'll put it in the chat too, but that way you can um, see. So here's the bottom of the flyer for today, just so you guys can kind of see what we tell the families. And, and then here's my information. So um, uh, some of you guys have already emailed me from this morning, but if you want to email me and get on the list so that you can get the flyers every week, um, or you can leave a message at our office, or you can text or call uh, our mobile phone. Excellent. Thank, Thank you question. so much, Glory. Appreciate it. And it looks like I do see some of your stuff. Oh, I haven't seen your drop of your contact information in the chat. So between yeah, you I'll and do, that. do that. Yep. Excellent. Thank you so much for sharing. I'll, I'll take back over okay. the screen just to share for everyone just now joining. We do have our awardees presenting from our Enhanced Community Integration and Social Rec Grant um, funded projects. So far, we've had Acing Autism, Golden Heart. Nope, we have not. <laughs> Acing Autism, Monarch <laughs> Behavioral, and Boys and Girls Club. Next, we will have our partner, Buildability, uh, present on her current grant-funded activities. So I believe I've already made you co-host. And now, without further ado, Anna from Buildability. Hi, everybody. Um, my name is Anna, and I am from Buildability. Buildability is a little different than some of the other grantees and awardees is that we do work exclusively with adults. Before this, we've been a vendor um, and a partner with North LA for about 50, for, for as long as they've been in existence. Um, so there is our contact information there. So this was really exciting for us to be able to have this grant awarded to us and to get into an area where we've been wanting to go but haven't yet gone into. So it, it's really fun. It's been really fun for us. So I'm gonna share my screen. <clears throat> I've been practicing, so hopefully it will it will do exactly what I wanted to do. Um, so we'll see, let's, let's see. Oh, there we are, look at that. I think I got it. First mm -hmm. time, look at that. And I'm hoping that everybody can see my screen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So this is redundant. This is a project that was funded through DDS and the American Rescue Plan of 2021. And um, we received this grant to promote friendships um, between children between the ages of three and 21 in activities of mutual interest. And the way we went about it was that we do have, we've gone from the, we, we've gone from the, the standpoint of let's find commonalities. Let's find things that children are interested in and then put those children together. So they already have really a common shared experience or shared like or dislike or a shared thing that they enjoyed, an activity that they enjoy doing. So that's already gone through one hurdle of, of trying to find people that have similar interests than you, than you do. So um, movement cooperative games, science art activities, they're all designed to develop friendships outside of the events and the groups. We're also really focusing on parents. So parents do participate in the activities. Um, they're invited to and they're encouraged to, and they also do spend some time just socially with each other, um, noticing whose children are playing together and then those parents get together. We've had quite a few parents exchange phone numbers to make um, arrangements to play, <coughs> excuse me, outside of the group activity which is always really exciting, which is our ultimate goal is to have these children make friends and have play dates outside of a formal kind of group activity. 
So we do have what's called social Saturdays and they meet twice a month. And we do split them by age because we have seen almost every age with the range within that age range. So we, we do have children who are three and we have children, we have a couple of adult children who are 21. Um, so we do split up the groups between, between ages. Each group is about two to three hours long. Um, and like I said, they do meet twice a month. So we actually are meeting, our last group is going to be the end of November because December is gonna be more of a data collection time for us and kind of a survey time to see what parents thought about the entire process. We do a post survey after each group to see, and it's anonymous to see how it went, how parents felt about it, what they noticed, what they liked, what they didn't like. And then we kind of, we incorporate their feedback into the next rounds of groups to see, you know, to, to ensure that we are listening to what people are saying and listening to what the children are saying about the groups as well. Um, I did have, I do have a few pictures, please forgive me, the aspect ratio is totally off, but I just wanted to share a couple of things. So each group that we have, each session has between two and three um, different areas of participation. So we have some active games, we have some art things, we have other things going on. They're all based on the the children's choice and their likes and dislikes. So we kind of see where children kind of gravitate within the groups because they really are allowed to go wherever they want to go. Um, and then we take it from there as far as um, facilitating conversations between children, facilitating sharing. A lot of the activities that we have are designed to not be isolated. So you can't really do them by yourselves. You have to have a partner kind of do them with you. And that has been really helpful, too, in getting kids to open up and play with other children. So we do have a ball pit. We have several sensory items for children who are getting a little overwhelmed or who just need that little bit of break. We have fidgets. We have um, the sensory ball pit, which is very popular. <laughs> this is one of the activities we did with the giant kind of umbrella thing and the parents participated and, um, you know, did the thing up and down and the kids run underneath or run on top. This is our older group, some of our kids in the older group. Um, we have some game playing going on. We have some conversation. They were building birdhouses in this one. So a few of the children had expressed an interest in building things and in nature and in birds. So we thought we'd incorporate all that into that kind of activity. It's kind of a free form thing. Um, we do send out the, when the parent registers, their child, there are some questions that they ask, that we ask them, such as, you know, what what kinds of things does your child like to do? What kinds of things do they not like to do? What kind of sensitivities do they have? Um, do they have any food allergies? Because we do have snacks. So we wanna make sure that everything is safe. <clears throat> and then we let parents know what the next group activity is going to be and where it's going to be. And then they register and you know, RSVP, whether or not they're going to come. We do invite everyone. So we do have typical children joining. We have siblings, we have cousins, we have friends. Um, we invite, pretty much everyone is, is invited and allowed to participate, which has really been a lot of fun and, and, and a lot of, and very helpful. So we do do a post survey, like I said, after each group and it is anonymous and we do, I just have a couple of comments that some parents have said about some of the groups afterwards. Um, we did have a movie, our last uh, activity that we did was a movie kind of a, during the day, a play date, movie date, um, pajama day. And we played in Kanto and we had it with the sing-along version. So they had like songs they could sing that came up on the screen. Um, we did activities that were surrounded kind of with Encanto. We actually had, it was interesting, we had two kids who were visually and hearing impaired. And so we do have equipment that we have so that they it would enhance the hearing and enhance the vision. So these children could also participate in the movie night. Everyone had a great time. Um, for some of our parents, as you can see, it said that They've never been to anything close to what a movie had been like. They'd only see movies at home. So this was a really fun experience for them. Um, parents state that they like that children aren't forced to participate. They actually get to choose what they want to do from, a, from a, a variety of things to do. And it allowed them to make some choice for themselves and have some autonomy in their, in their, play, date, their play decisions. 
Um, one mother shared that she was she was so sweet. Her daughter had been isolated a lot since she graduated from high school. And this is really an activity that she enjoyed and she had fun because she hadn't had any opportunity since graduating of getting out and having friends and, and playing and doing something fun. So that was that was so gratifying to see and hear. Um, I am I do have a copy of our, the flyers that we have right now. Um, I know they're too small. <laughs> they are in English and Spanish. These we are, we do have quite a few younger participants in our groups. Um, so we are kind of targeting and looking for older uh, kids to participate. The unfortunate, one unfortunate thing about the, the timing of this grant was once we received the grant and started reaching out to parents and to schools, a lot of schools, especially the high schools and junior highs had already graduated and no one was there. So um, we did have a hard time at first getting some of the older kids, but we're building up momentum in that region. But so if you have any more questions or you'd like a copy of the flyers, you can always email me. This is my email address, apolin at buildabilityla.org. You can also go to our website or have parents go to our website. It's right on the first page and you can and they can register on the website. It's done through a QR code. And, and well, the website is done through a click button. Um, parents do need to go through the registration process to sign up so that we can send them the, inf the information on when the groups are, where they are happening, the times and what we're actually going to be doing. Um, September is gonna be really fun. It's gonna be our first park activity for both age groups um and it it's going to be a lot of fun so any any questions about anything we did have a general question um and the powerpoint will be shared um afterwards um that will have all of the contact information um for each of the presenters and the information on their um uh, website all right Thank you so much, Anna, and buildability. Up next, we've got our representative from Golden Heart Ranch, Sam Hine. Thank you, Kimberly, and hello, everyone. My name is Sam Hine. I'm finance manager at Golden Heart Ranch. Um, and just like the, the last meeting, we want to start with an expression of gratitude to North County Regional and Kimberly and Maria for helping us obtain this grant and um, make good use of it by promoting our events and stuff. You've had a really beneficial effect on Golden Heart Ranch, and this has allowed us to invest in so much program capacity and take so many strides that we're very excited to be making. So we're really thankful, and uh, we really, really appreciate it. Um, I am going to share on my screen here a little PowerPoint presentation that we've got going. So this is a brief overview. The project that we have granted is our Social Living Club, which is our uh, suite of programs that serves people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Um, Golden Heart Ranch is probably best known for our ranch site out in Agoura Hills. We have a, a beautiful property up there with a whole lot of embedded flexibility. And we use that place to put on art programs, fitness programs. We have livestock animals that our ranchers are involved in taking care of, um, uh, a swimming pool. And we're able to use the kind of embedded flexibility in that site to offer programs that meet a wide variety of tastes and client requests. We try to really stay on top of what it is that our ranchers want to be doing at the ranch and to make sure that we're either providing that ourselves or bringing in activity specialists to kind of honor honor those desires. Um, also though, we're, we're really committed to using that ranch as a jumping off point to connect people with resources in the community. We have a, a fleet of vehicles that we use to bring people out for even quick errands like grocery shopping or, or things like that when we have a mostly on-site day at the ranch, but we also have programming that is just located fully out in the community. Um, and so we're, we're committed to using our assets and our, uh, our vehicles and our ranch site as, as a means to bridge people into the community as well as uh, enjoying what we're able to offer on site. Um, I'll, I'll just kind of briefly go through these different program formats. For folks who are new to Golden Heart Ranch, 
the probably best way to get in touch with us and to start engaging with us is to come to one of our free community events. The next event, and I'll be sharing a flyer shortly, is for our Halloween carnival, which is coming up on October 21st. We're going to have a lot of games and fun and costume parties there, and it's open to people of all ages and absolutely welcome to bring family and friends along with them. Um, we just had the Endless Summer Pool Party uh, earlier in August at the ranch, and that was a big success. We were at our capacity of 125 people, thanks in large part to the regional center's uh, efforts to help us promote the event. And we saw a lot of new faces. Um, at, at that event, we learned how important it was to make these free and that we, we have a nominal suggested donation of like five bucks. That is kind of a holdover from the way that we used to do things. But we were able to welcome so many people from group homes and so many aides and stuff and refund a lot of folks at the door. Uh, we took that approach thanks to a tip from North County Regional, and it was absolutely the right move, and we're excited to maintain that approach going forward. Um, so that's a great opportunity to come and join Afternoon at the Ranch and get to know a little bit about our programs and see the people and the sign up close. Um, but it's just kind of one small part of what we do. We have a lot of regular weekly programming as well. On Tuesdays and Thursdays, we offer Ranch Days. This is like a, a four-hour long half-day program at the ranch that uh, is mostly focused on on-site stuff. There's typically an animal care component, a fitness activity, um, arts. We're doing cooking all the time and eating communal meals that we prepare. Also, we typically have an off-site bit to this in the afternoon. That's usually at minimum a trip to the grocery store to facilitate what I just mentioned, or volunteering at the food pantry or accessing a nature trail um, up in the Santa Monica Mountains near our facility. And that's our kind of flagship weekly program that we're, we're going to be expanding and adding to at the end of the year. Um, on Wednesdays, th this had been just once a month, but we're about to start doing it every single week, thanks in part to the support we get from Regional Center. This is a full-blown outing day to somewhere fabulous in greater Los Angeles that our ranchers have asked to go to. We load everyone up into our vans. Uh, recent programs have brought people for a behind the scenes tour of Dodger Stadium, Hollywood Wax Museum, uh, Museums of Natural History, wherever our ranchers are asking to go. Um, it's our goal to connect them to some of the fabulous cultural and educational and recreational and natural amenities that we have access to in this region. Uh, we do a lot of beach days, uh, a lot of exploration of different parks. So uh, this itinerary is really driven by where our ranchers want to go. Um, and, and we're happy to use our resources to put that on. We also do seasonal weekly camps. Um, we have an upcoming one around Thanksgiving week. This is kind of a mix of the, the previous stuff I've mentioned. There will be fully offsite days and these kind of hybrid days that make use of what we've got at the ranch. Typically with the holiday theme, that, that would kind of inform the type of art we're doing or the type of meals that we're making um, and keeping things kind of seasonal and fun. Uh, for our, our after school crowd, um, we've got uh, evening social club meetings right now uh, for North County's catchment area. These are occurring in the West Valley. Um, I, I think it's about once every month, maybe once every two weeks right now. Uh, the current program format is like dinner and bowling. So folks will get together uh, for an evening of uh, recreation and, and a meal with friends. And then everyone hits the bowling alley together for a few hours. Um, that one's been super popular and we're, we're constantly exploring new uh, program formats like that to add to our evening social club activities. And uh, the final one that I'm gonna mention is Camp Coyote Ridge. This is our full-blown overnight camp offering for folks that are looking for a little more independence or dedicated time with, with their friends at Golden Heart Ranch. Usually runs concurrently with our seasonal camp and allows people to stay at our ranch facility overnight and bunk with friends. Uh, we do late night campfires and singing and movie nights and stuff. And uh, it's, it's really fun. So we offer all these different program formats to try to reach people with different needs and preferences. Um, we are really committed to soliciting feedback from our participants and making sure that the activities that we choose and the places that we go 
are relevant and interesting and age appropriate. Um, they serve all different kinds of people. It's, it's the vast majority, however, are um, under 21. And the goal of our programs are pretty highly staffed is to promote the development of friendships and relationships among our participants. We try to keep people coming back and make sure that everyone has access to whatever form that they can take their socialization and, and recreation in. Um, and that's, that's really what we're geared towards is providing uh, the setting and the facilitation for progressive development of social skills and opportunities to have fun and do the things in LA that we kind of all take for granted and love about this place. So that's, uh, that's the quick overview of Golden Heart Ranch. Here I have the flyer for our upcoming Halloween carnival. Uh, we, we plan to send this out to regional center uh, for inclusion in the regular newsletters as well. Um, and you're welcome to, to email. You'll see here it says five bucks per person, but really we're, we're happy to let people in for free upon request or refund people at the door if, if that's what it takes. And um, uh, a little bit of additional contact information here as well. And I think I dropped some in the chat. Are there, are there any questions that anyone has about our programs? Okay, well with that, I will uh, turn it back over. Thanks so much, everybody. Excellent, thank you so much, Sam. Um, and as indicated previously, there are a lot of amazing, um, uh, exciting uh, awardees with really, really interesting programming that's really dynamic um, that we're hoping to share. And definitely Golden Heart Ranch is one of those programs that we're really excited to have as an awardee to be able to share that experience with individuals and have that programming out in the community, as well as all our other partners that have um, shared with us today. Um, if you are just now joining us, we did have presentations from Acing Autism, Buildability, uh, now Golden Heart Ranch, Monarch Behavioral and Boys and Girls Club Malibu, all truly exciting, exciting organizations that have been awarded through this grant to have um, activities that our individuals uh, ages three to 21 can participate in. Just as a reminder, these are not currently vendored activities or vendored resources. However, we are working with quite a few of them towards vendorization and hopefully we'll have that um, information coming shortly. Um, but as of now, we do have one last presentation. I'm not sure if they've been able to join us. Um, our partners with Jay Nolan. And if not, no worries. Our um, amazing resource development uh, staff, Maria Hernandez, will present a little bit about what Jay Nolan is doing and their funded activities through this current grant. Yes, thank you, Kimberly. Um, so uh, unfortunately, Jay Nolan couldn't um, be with us today, but uh, I'll go ahead and present a little bit about their project. Um, so Jay Nolan Community Services, um, they have four upcoming resource presentations, specially designed to empower young adults um, who are deaf and uh, plus and hard of hearing. Um, they work on creating a one-page profile once they graduate high school to prepare them for what comes next after school. Uh, the presentations will take place in September and October, offering uh, valuable insights and resources to navigate the world of deaf and hard of hearing. Um, and they also um, provide resources to families from school age to adult consumers, um, just to bring awareness, engage, and provide resources for, for those that um, have uh, intellectual disabilities and autism and, um, and are also hard of hearing. So they do provide uh, those resources and I will go ahead and put their information if you would like uh, to contact them. Um, you can also email them as well. Excellent, thank you so much, Maria. Um, so if there are any general questions about e the grants as a whole or about the process, please know we do have our website at nlacrc.org. Um, there is a Enhanced Community Integration Social Rec Grant um, landing page where we will provide general information about the grant and um, information about the wardies, including any of their latest um, flyers. We are also sending out information um, to our um, everyone signed up for news you can use and internally to our case management team. Um, if you are curious about social recreational activities as a whole in general, we also have a landing page um, on our website that does indicate a few of our other 
um, social recreational activities that are vendored and or are generic resources that can be um, accessed through the community. And we can leave those two links in the chat as well. Other than that, um, if you have any questions about the awardees that presented today, we would love to answer them here and or we will be providing uh, this presentation, this PowerPoint and their contact information via our website and um, emails out to uh, through news you can use and through our case management team. And as always, any questions can always be sent to resource development at NLACRC.org. Thank you, Maria. How long will these programs be available? Oh, great, great question. Thank you so much. I answered that a little bit earlier and I did forget to say that in our first session. So great question. The grant funded activities are funded through December of this year, December, 2023, at which point hopefully we have uh, a good bulk of those that are interested in um, the vendorization process um, partially or completely through that. But the grant funded activities um, that have been presented today are funded through uh, December, 2023. Any other questions that you're seeing, Maria? No, I don't see any other questions. All right, so if there's any no more questions or um, any more information from our awardees, we wanna thank everyone for coming, especially a special shout out to all of our awardees that were able to come and present about their great opportunities and their great activities that they have scheduled out. Definitely encourage you to reach out to them directly if you have any questions about their services or supports and or to our team if you need any assistance with connecting to those um, awardees. Um, we hope to make some amazing connections for our youth, uh, children, and adolescents out in our community and get them integrated and um, having fun. All right. Excellent. Well, thank you guys so much. We appreciate you and have an amazing day. Bye.